declare with me.
say holy. We say thank you, oh God. It says there was an earthquake on the earth. Let me tell you something. When there's an earthquake that's happening, something has to split. Something has to shift. If there is a storm in your life, I want to let you know that there's one individual that I can declare right now that went through a storm on your behalf. On your behalf on your behalf every individual that declared the name Jesus I want to let you know he lives come on somebody you ought to be excited that he lives in this place you ought to be excited that he is in your heart because we are nothing without that sacrifice and we say thank you Lord for setting setting that bar high for you are holy you are Lift up the praise of the room. Let the repeal of the Lord say so. Come on, somebody. You have a worship. You have a praise. Let them hear it. Join the angels today and declare that God is good. God is good. Come on, would you declare it? Come on, somebody. Won't you put those hands as we declare it today? Let everything that has breath, won't you praise the Lord? Come on. Let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on, praise somebody! I praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. Woo. I praise when I'm sure, praise when I'm doubting. Oh, I praise.
I love when they take off and I love when they land. Is this a fascination for me and planes? But before the plane can take off, it has to wait before it's clear. When it's finally clear, it's in the air. But as it's in the air, turbulence can happen. Come on. My God, my God. In the midst of this turbulence, I can picture the pilot saying, we've been here, we've done this, we're just going to stay the course. Unless it's something out of the norm, where they would have to come up with option B. Y'all with me? Jesus came on the earth. He had to wait for an hour. Then his ministry began at 30, and he did it for three years. Now, all of the blessings, all of the healings, these are the good things. But then there was a storm with his prosecution. And he said, I'm going to stay the course. Because he thought about you. He thought about you. He thought about you. When we sit out here, we proclaim, when we call your name, there is power in your name. I need you to close your eyes right here, right now. I want you to stop looking at Ronnie. Ronnie is mad. The worship team is mad. I need you to close your eyes and I need you to put your view on Jesus. So when we shout out, when I call your name, you are the only thing Jesus. When I call your name, you are the only Jesus. name of Jesus. This miracles happen when we call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I didn't hear you. And when we call on the name of Jesus, Jesus. just 
just one more time, just one more time. My, my people in the back didn't hear you. In the name of Jesus. Ooh, okay, I hear the back. Okay, okay, just one more time. There's deliverance in the Jesus. There's healing in Jesus. There's breakthrough in Jesus. To God be the glory. Welcome to CC. C. Welcome to CC. family thank you for joining us here's what's going on this week at community christian church start your day off with prayer join our conference prayer line every morning monday through friday from 6 a.m to 6 30 a.m grab your phone and dial in at 305-330-5793 need a midday boost catch our facebook live noonday prayer also Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock p.m. Join Pastor Bob and Miss Susie for in-person Monday night prayer meetings. For more information, please reach out to Pastor Bob. Ladies, if you are looking for a great time to collaborate and grow in God's Word, join Miss Susie as she leads In Love Women's Bible Study every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube Live. Join us for Digesting the Word, Midweek Bible Study, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube Live. Be encouraged as we dive deep into God's Word. Thank you for joining us. And if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel, CCC Miami. Let's stay connected. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CCC Miami. Hope to see you soon. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. 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 You know, today is Resurrection Sunday. And we're here today because we've all come from a dark place. But you know, the reason why we are celebrating is because Mary and some of the other ladies that followed Jesus on that first Resurrection Sunday morning went to the grave to to. Um, to, to put the, the ointment on the body of Jesus. So they went to the tomb, and they saw that the tomb was rolled back. And then they went inside, and nobody was there. And they thought, who took the body of Jesus? What happened? And suddenly, the ladies looked up, and there were two angels, the Bible tells us, in Luke chapter 24, verse 5 and 6. It says they were sitting above, a clo clothed in whiteness, and they said, why seek you the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen instead. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Can you say that? Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to take a time. Whatever you're doing, stop talking. Just take a moment. Close your eyes right now. Just close your eyes and remember the day just before you put your trust in Jesus. Remember the difficulties. Remember the guilt. Remember the shame. Remember the emptiness and the loneliness. And then the day came, that next day came, 
when you put your trust in Jesus and you became alive because of what Jesus has done for you. We have to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we want, before we started our 40 days of prayer and fasting, we wrote down the names of our loved ones, our friends that we wanted to see get saved. Ask yourself a question. How much do we want them and every other person that doesn't know Jesus to know him? And one of the ways that God does it is he uses his people to work in the kingdom. And so we want to invite you to be part of the labors. Not only to go out, not only to, to speak out, not only to show out what Jesus can do, but let's give today because of a thankful heart to what he has done for us. Amen? Amen. And if you, as you give, I want to encourage you. Look at the screen, scan that QR code, and it gives you three different ways to give. And if you're privileged to come and be here at the live service, our ushers are coming around. Just raise your hand if you have, want to give out a, get a tithes and offering envelope. Otherwise, you can give according to what it says on the screen. With that, let's pray. And thank God that he sent his only son to die for sinners. Amen. Father, we love you so much. And we know that it's not because of us. It's all because of your overwhelming love that took our hearts of rock and softened to them so that we could see and have saving faith. See what you have done for me and for us and want to do for everyone that will call in the name of the Lord. And as we give today, we don't give because we have to. We give because we are delighted to. Because we love you. And we want our loved ones and all those we know and all those we don't know to come to a saving knowledge of you. So bless us as we give. So we'll have hands that are open to give in any way you ask us to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's praise the Lord as we give. Hallelujah. As we stand for the last song, if you can, as a sign of surrender, that Lord, you get the glory, all of the glory.
that your prayer tonight? Is that your prayer tonight? To you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. All from you all. Unto you all. You deserve all. Come on, let that be your prayer tonight, God. In the midst of the strong, we sing. You were the love it I just sense, I like the part where it says, day and night, night and day, 
the essence is arising, the incense of, is arising. And, and where that came from is from the Old Testament when the Lord told Moses, Moses, when you build a tabernacle, there is the holy place and there is the most holy place, the holy of holies. And in the first room before you enter the holiest room, Moses, I want you to set up a table of bread to show that he is our daily bread. I want you to set up a lampstand to show that the light should never go out in your heart. But then in front of the curtains, before you enter my presence, let a essence, essence, let the incense continue to arise in front of the curtains before my presence. And that incense represent the prayers of the saints. That incense represent prayers continuously in the house of God. So that's why when Jesus showed up on the scene, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So incense will always go up before the Lord as prayer. And so today I just sense that somebody need prayer today. That someone need a breakthrough. And if that's you, I want you to make your way to the front. We're going to lift you up in prayer. You might need a prayer for a financial breakthrough. You might need prayer for a physical healing. You might need prayer for a family to get through what they're going through. You might need prayer for a breakthrough right now. So if that's you, just come up front. And if you're watching please stretch your hand towards the screen we're going to go ahead and lift that going to lift up prayers before the lord come on up come on up to the front come on up get closer yes 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 leaders come on up if you need prayer for anything just come on up let's lift them up in prayer right now hallelujah father right now in the name of jesus can you, can you come up for Mr. Spencer? I think Mr. Spencer, we want to lift him up before the Lord for his kidneys and, and, and the things. So let's go ahead and lift up in prayer right now. Father, right now we come before you. Go ahead and pray out loud while you're praying with me. Start making your, quest, making your requests known before the Lord. Father, we come before your throne of grace. And we come under the name above all names. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask Jehovah Jireh. We ask you, Jehovah Rapha, the God that provides our need, the God that can heal every situation. We call on you, Jehovah Shalom, the God that can bring peace that passes understanding. So Father, we call on you right now. And Lord, you know our situation. You see our challenges. And right now, Father, we come before you because nothing Nothing is impossible. Nothing impossible with those who believe in you. Nothing with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things. Say it out loud. With God, how many things? Well, how many things? All things are possible. So lift up your hands right now. Father, we say thank you that all things are made possible before, before you and through you. And so, Father, right now, we ask for healing right now. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you will remove demonic strongholds right now. In the name of Jesus, we, Lord, send your angels to bind, to bind the strong man, to bind the strong man, to bind the strong man. And we say, strong man, out in the name of Jesus, out in the name of Jesus, out in the name of Jesus. We declare the peace of God. We declare the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And right now, Father, we pray, Lord, for our brother, Mr. Spencer. We pray, oh God, touch his body. We pray for those that are battling terminal disease. We pray, touch their body. We pray for families that are going through challenging times. We pray, touch their body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We say, have your way. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and sing it out. Oh, day and night. Day and night. Oh, day and night. We give you a 
offering. Give the Lord a clap offering. Give the Lord a thank offering. Say thank you, Lord. Just by declaring, I say thank you, Lord. 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 your word in the name of Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Give them, walk around and give someone a high five and say, God is going to do it. Say, God is going to do it. Declare, say, the Lord is going to do it. The Lord is going to bring healing. Yeah. God is going to do it. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe that he deserved the glory. Say amen. Say amen. For those who are watching, we want to say welcome to CC. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord is good and his mercy, and his mercy endures for how long? Forever and ever. I want to say thank you for joining us on this Resurrection Sunday. For those who are watching, we want to say thank you for joining us for this service. And if you have your Bible, please lift it up before the Lord because we have a proclamation. So if your Bible is a digital Bible, it's in your iPad or in your phone, you can lift that up too. But lift up your Bible before the Lord right now and repeat after me because we got a tradition. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, say it out loud. Lord, this is your word. It will last forever and ever. I take every promise in this book and I apply it in my everyday life. Teach me, Lord, to be a skillful sword woman, sword man. I love your word. Give it a good kiss. Father, I pray, Lord, as I begin to share this word, I pray, Lord, let it not be my words, but let it be your words. Hold back my worldview. Hold back my personal opinion. And, Lord, I pray, use me, Holy Spirit, as your vessel right now. Use me, Holy Spirit, to speak words of anointing, words that will bypass, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, the things of the world, and go straight to the issue of the heart. And Father, I pray, let this word not be snatched away by the enemy. Let this word not be, Lord, in Jesus' name, choked by the worries of the world. But Lord, I pray, let this word fall in the good soil of our hearts and mind that it produce 30, 60, 100 fold. And all of God's children that believe that say, Amen. I'm like, man, y'all looking good today. Look at somebody say, you look better than last week. You're not lying. You're not lying. But the Bible says we're changing from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. And you know, with this, with Resurrection Sunday, I just wanted to take time to celebrate because celebrate what Christ has done for us. How many of you glad that God been good to you? Say amen. He's been a good God, and he's always good. And, you know, this past week while I was preparing to preach this word, I was, I was watching a video on evangelism where, where somebody was sharing their faith. Teenagers, I encourage you, while you're in high school, share your faith. While you're in middle school, share your faith. You're not too young to share your faith. And for those who are in the workplace, share your faith because you don't know that might be the last day you're going to see your classmate. You don't know that's going to be the last day you're going to see your co-workers. So I encourage you when God give you an opportunity to talk about him, talk about how good he's been to you. If you don't know how to preach or give a verse, just talk about the goodness of God. It, has God been good to you? Say amen. Just so talk about the goodness of God. And so this man was sharing his faith and he was talking to a woman that was in the Catholic church. She'd been in the Catholic church all her life. And so he went and asked her, hey, have you been born again? And then she looked at him and said, I don't know what that means. He said, what church you go to? He said, I've been in the Catholic church for a while. I go in and give my Hail Marys and everything. But she did not know what it means to be Born, what? Again. Because Jesus told us in order for us to enter heaven, we must be what? Born, what? Again. You must give your life to Jesus Christ. 
And so he walked her through what it means to be born again. And he tried to show, first of all, in order for you to be born again, you got to recognize that we are all sinners. How many of y'all are sinners? Say amen. amen. If you sinned before, raise your hand. If you ain't, you raise your hand, you lying already, so you sinning. All right. We've, how many of y'all sinned more than one time? More than three times? Go ahead, go ahead. You know how many of y'all, okay, for, for, for those who need clarity, if you ever lied before, raise your hand. If you ever stole before, raise your hand. If you ever cut somebody out, raise your hand. If you ever disrespect your mom and daddy and felt like running away from home, raise your hand. If you ever miss a Sunday service, raise your hand. If you never kept, if you use God's name in vain, raise your hand. All of that means we are guilty of sin and we need a Savior. And so that's what God said. Jesus was, this guy was telling this woman, listen, you know what? We all need Christ. And Christ is that hope. Everybody say hope. And so I was listening to this. I was listening to that, uh, uh, I think, the other day. And now this morning, you know, fasting was done. And fasting was done. And, and you know, when fasting is done, you're trying to get the, a good breakfast. Right, Kevin, Danny? You ever try to have a good breakfast? So fasting was done. And, you know, I had to drop my wife off to the airport. And, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go to my IHOP. I don't care what y'all feel about IHOP. IHOP got them pancakes right. I don't care. Some of y'all probably first watch people. Some of y'all probably Denny's people. Some of y'all probably McDonald's people. But IHOP got this two, two, two. Two pancakes. Two eggs, and either two bacon, two sausage, turkey bacon, or two sausage. I like my two, two, two. So when I went to IHOP and got my two, 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 I went there and got my two, two, two. And so now I'm waiting, and I see a bunch of women, a bunch of young ladies, and they're there, they're excited, they're talking. And it's, it's like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And so I got my two, 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 and then while I'm walking out, I saw one of the young ladies crying. They start crying, and they walked out the restaurant, and it was in the front. And I was looking at it, and, 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 you know, as a pastor, I'm concerned now. And so I went to them, and I was like, hey, what's wrong? What's going on? And she, she, she proceeded to tell us or tell me that her sister passed away. And I was like, how? She didn't know. And I say, and she's thinking it's her fault, but she wasn't around. It wasn't around. She wasn't around to see her sister pass away. And I was like, how do you blame yourself? And I realized that her trauma is like everyone else's trauma when they have, when they lose someone they love. How many of y'all ever lost someone you love? Raise your hand. You know, someone dear to your heart. And you know, and it feels like there's no hope. It feels like there is no hope. But I'm here to tell you, and I told that young lady, I said it is not your fault, and I had to make sure she realized there is still hope. And with all that we see that's going around the world, even in the month of February as a pastor, it was one of most, one of the most difficult moments in my pastoralship because it, when, in that one month, 16 people that I know died. 16 people or a close friend that lost a loved one. 16 people in one month. Matter of fact, half, no, 14 of those people died within the span of two weeks. And out of those 14 people, Four families lost two people in one week. So that was eight people that died in, the, in those four families. And it was amazing. And it felt like, man, where is the hope? Sometimes when things like that happen, you feel like you're hopeless. Have y'all ever felt hopeless before? Especially when it's death. It feels hopeless. But I want to tell you today, and the title of my preaching today is that hope is still here. Hope is here. Look at somebody and tell them, hope is here. Hope is still here. And so today we're going to talk about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, when, and we got to understand when we're talking about resurrection, it still gives us hope that death is not the finality. And the reason why I brought that up, I go back to the video I watched with the, young, with the woman who did not know what born again meant. And he, then he asked her another question. He says, do you fear dying? And she said, yes. And he said, why do you fear dying? Because she said, I don't know what's going to happen on the other side. Now, this is a woman who's been to church 
all her life. And she didn't know what born again was. And she did not know what would happen after death. And so she had no hope. You know you can still sit in church and feel like you have no hope. But I'm here to encourage you to, to show you three ways you can see hope. You can have hope right now. You can have hope and know that hope is here and hope is on the other side. And all of God's children that believe that say. So the three ways I want to talk about is this. Let's go to Matthew 28, verse 1 through verse 7. Read it out loud with me. It's up on top. If you can see it, read it out loud with me. Ready, set, go. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook from fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel said to the woman, do not be a For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has what, ladies and gentlemen? Say it again. He has what? Just as he said. Come and see the place where he was lying. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will what? See him. Behold, I have told you. Now, the first point I want to make is this. The first point I want to make is this. How do you know hope is still here? Because the messenger professed it. Everybody say it. The messenger professed it. Who was the messenger? As we see right here, an angel was a messenger. The angel professed it. And how did he profess it first? An earthquake came. Notice the earthquake happened at the last breath of Jesus and at the first breath that Jesus came back with. Do you recall Good Friday? It says when Jesus gave up his spirit, it said the earth shook violently and the Roman soldier saw the earth shook, the skies turned dark, and it says the rocks split in half. When the Roman soldier saw the sky, the earth, and the rocks And how they reacted when Jesus said it is finished, all of a sudden he said, this must be the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Now, an angel come back, and while he's coming back, guess what? Jesus woke up from the dead, and guess what? Earth responded again. Do you know, it says when Jesus is coming back for us, when he come down and put his feet on a mountain of Zion, it says when he put his left feet and his right feet on a mountain of Zion, it says mountain of Zion going to split in two. The earth is going to shake again. Because why? The earth knows its creator. The earth knows God is touching the planet. The earth knows when its creator is coming in. And so right here, the angel appearance caused the earth to shook, to shake. And then it says the stone rolled away. The stone rolled. I like what pastor, one of my friends preached this morning. I like watching my other friends preach. And one of the things he said, Pastor Artie Jackson, he said this, the stone did not roll away to get Jesus out. The stone rolled away so the women could come in to see Jesus is not there. Because Jesus don't need no help moving stones, amen? And so the stone rolled away, so the women, because don't forget, the stone is a big stone. They needed men to move the stone. Plus, the stone was sealed with the king wax and seal, so nobody could open up the, 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 the tomb. So now the women asked themselves, how are we going to get into the tomb? And the angel said, don't worry, ladies, I'm going to handle that. Roll the stone away. The Roman soldiers saw the angels also, which proved... That Jesus rose from the dead. And the tomb was what? Was it full? You go to Muhammad's tomb, he's still there. You go to Buddha's tomb, he's still there. You go to Malcolm X's tomb, he's still there. You go to, uh, what was it, Asil, uh, Asil, uh, Asil, uh, the, Rasta, the Rasta king? Hali, Hali Asil, the king. I, 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 I know his name on the tip of my tongue. He's dead. He's still here. But when you go to Jerusalem 
and you look at Jesus' tomb, he is what? Not there. Because why? The angel appeared and the angel announced, he has risen, come see, and after you come see, go tell the disciples. Why is this important that the messenger profess it? Because guess what? God is able to send someone. If you don't get it, God will send someone to give you hope. And he had to give the women hope. So what he did, he sent an angel to give them hope. There's times when you feel like hope is nowhere to be found. There's times where you feel hopeless. And guess what? I want to tell you, God may send a spiritual angel or God will send somebody to come and tell you, listen, all is not done. God can still give you a breakthrough. God sometimes will bring a friend or a family or a stranger to give you a word just to give you hope. How many of y'all believe that? Say amen. Look at somebody, say, tell somebody something. The hope is still here. Encourage them. Tell them, hope is still here. Not only that, not only that, just like the earthquake shook the earth, God will shake things around you, and God will shake things around you just to give you hope. God will sometimes move people out of your way, obstacles that have been giving you, making you hopeless, and God will say, listen, I'm going to show you I'm with you, so I'm going to shake things up around you just to show I'll give you hope. With me, all things are possible. God wants us to know there is still hope no matter how bad your situation is, and he'll send a messenger to profess it. You know, there's time where I've seen my doubt turn into delights. There's time I see that. And, 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 and one of those times is when I'm about to officiate a wedding. Oh, I officiated at least, I think, over 150 to 200 weddings. And it amazed me when the couple get in front of that altar and as a pastor... You can tell who you think is hopeless and who you think is hopeful. <laughs> you can tell. At the altar, you can tell. When, when they start, when, at the proposal, I'm going to tell you right now, at the proposal, the girl cry. At the wedding, the guys cry because he realizes it's happening for real. <laughs> and so... There was, a, there was a wedding I was officiating, and in the wedding I officiated, and, and there are times when, when other people don't have hope for certain couples. They don't let the couple know that, but they call me pastor. Are you actually going to marry these two? I don't know. They're going to make it. I don't know. I don't know. So, so somebody called me for, the, for a couple, and I was like, why you say that? Because of this and that and this and that. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. And they said, please, Pastor, talk to them. And I had several calls where people called me a week before the wedding. You, don't do it. And I'm like, too late. The motion, it's, it's emotion. And so at the wedding, I look for signs. I look for signs between the bride and the groom when they're about to, when they're about to do their vows. And you know what signs give me hope? When they're looking at each other and they're giggling. They're giggling in their holy hand. And other people cannot see them giggling. And I be like looking at them. They having fun. And then you know what gives me sign? When, when they're trying to fix each other's face and each other's collar while they're at the altar, they're looking at each other and they're holding hands and squeezing hands. As a matter of fact, I officiate a wedding this past weekend, and, 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 and the couple was taking it nonchalant. And I was like taking it serious. And I was like, hey, you need to do this. They look, Pastor Eddie, we don't need to do that. Yes, you need to do this. I was like, and then I said, well, you need to stand right here. Pastor Eddie, we don't need it. It's just going to be a small wedding. I said, do it. And by the time they got to the altar, boo-hoo crying. And I looked at him. I said, yeah, yeah, I thought it was nothing, huh? But you know what it did? It gave me hope. It gave me hope. And I want to tell you guys, your marriage may look like it's in the tomb. Your relationship with your family or your children may look like it's in a tomb. Situation around you look like it may be dying. But I want to tell you, you serve a God that can breathe life out of a hopeless situation. 
And then number two, I need, to ask, I need to tell you this. Not only will God send a messenger to profess it, but also God will give you a message to address it. Everybody say message to address it. And so God will send you a messenger. He'll send an angel to profess it, and God will give you a message to address it. Why you say that? When we look at Luke chapter 24, verse, when you look at Luke chapter 24, we're going to read verse 19 to 21. Before we read 19 to 20, 21, let me give you what was going on in Luke chapter 24. Jesus then rose from the dead. He already told Mary Magdalene and Mary to go tell the disciples. Now, there's two guys who are believers, and they're on the road of Emmaus. While they're on the road, they're walking away from Jerusalem. They are hopeless. They are in shock because Jesus died. They thought he was going to be the king. They thought he was going to kill, take out the Roman Empire. They thought all of this. So they're walking home. They're saddened by the death of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, and I, oh, I, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus, why did he talk with these two guys? After he tell Mary Magdalene, go to Galilee, all of a sudden, Jesus run up behind him. This is after he, pay attention now, this is after he rose from the dead. He walks up behind the two guys, and look what he said. He said to them, what sort of things, because they're talking about what happened in Jerusalem. And so Jesus walks up and asks them a question. What sort of things? Now, they did not know it was him. Some way, somehow, Jesus disguised himself. They do not know this is Jesus talking to them. The Jesus they're talking about that died, this is the Jesus that's alive, walking and asking them questions. What sort of things? And they said to him, those about Jesus of Jesus the Nazareth, the Nazarene, who proved to be a what? Prophet, mighty in what? Deed and in word, in the sight of God and all the what? People. And how the chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to what? To death and crucified him. But we were hoping, say it out loud, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. So the believers were baffled. These two guys were believers, and they were baffled, and they knew Jesus was a prophet through his words and through his deeds, but he was now dead. And they was like, man, we were hoping he would be the one, a king, not the king of heaven, but he would be an earthly king, and he was going to galvanize his disciples and galvanize the people. That's why on Sunday they were saying Hosanna, but on Friday they said crucify him. They were hoping Jesus would take out the Roman Empire. They were hoping Jesus would take out Herod, Pilate, and Caesar. And they were hoping Jesus was going to go ahead and be the king that it says in the Bible he would be. But they did not see the other prophecy. They did not see the prophecy about Jesus must suffer and die. They were waiting for the latter king instead of the king they had now. In other words, what Jesus are you believing in? A Jesus that always bless you and don't think he can take you through suffering? So what happened is sometimes we want Jesus to bless us, Jesus blesses, Jesus blesses. But when we go through suffering, we think he ain't with us. But he went through more suffering than all of us put together. Because why? He knows suffering and trials tend to shape us. It's almost like a parent. They love their children so much that they give the child anything, but they forget to discipline the child. And what will happen to that child? Spoil. Now, the spoil is not because you love them so much that you give them everything they need. The spoiling is when they do something wrong, you don't, need to, you don't do what you need to do as a parent. That's where the spoiling is. Spoiling is not loving a child too much. Spoiling is that you don't discipline them when they do wrong. And so sometimes the Bible says God allow us to go through testing time, through trials, to test our hearts, to see will we still love him if we don't get what we want. 
And so right here, these disciples, these two guys, was expecting the other Jesus, the the Jesus that's going to come in the book of Revelation. And Jesus had to go back and tell them, listen, y'all missed the whole Bible about me suffering. You read the good part of the Bible, but you didn't want to read the suffering part of the Bible. Have you noticed a lot of preachers talk about the good part of the Bible, but they don't talk about hell? They don't talk about sin? They don't talk about testing. They don't talk about repentance. When you get all that sugar, 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 sugar preaching, you're going to get cavities in your soul. You got to have balanced preaching. You know as a parent, your child have so many candy from the Easter egg hunk. And you know, if they eat all that candy that they just got from the Easter egg stuff, from the Halloween, they eat all that. You know you're going to have to deal with that child in the emergency room. Why? Because you know they need a balanced diet. They need protein. They need vegetable. They need vitamins. Some of those things come without sugar. Matter of fact, some medicine you know they don't want to take, they even flavored them. They still taste off. And what am I saying? Right here, these believers were baffled because the Jesus they were expecting was not the Jesus that they expect to suffer and die. And but guess what? Not only were they baffled, but later on they became believers. Why? Because now Jesus started showing them the Bible. Read what it says in verse 25. Go to the next verse. Read it with me. It says, and then he said, Jesus said to them, you foolish men, how slow to heart to believe in the prophet's When what the prophets had what? Spoken. Was it not necessary for Christ to what? Suffer these things and to come into what? His glory? Then beginning from the book of Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the things that were what? The things that were what? Written about who? Himself and where? So all of a sudden, Jesus realized, oh, you was worshiping the wrong Jesus. Let me go show you in the Bible where it says me suffering. So Jesus had Bible study with him. Jesus started in the book of Genesis where it talks about him, in the book of Exodus where it talks about him, in the book of Leviticus where it talks about him, in the book of Numbers where it talks about him, in the book of Deuteronomy where it talks about him. And then Jesus went to the prophets. The prophet Isaiah talked about Jesus. The prophet Ezekiel talked about Jesus. The prophet of Daniel talked about Jesus. The prophet of Micah talked about Jesus. And the prophet of Malachi talked about Jesus. Jesus had to do a whole Bible study to let them know, hey, this is what God said about me, and I'm fulfilling it, but y'all were waiting for the prophecy of revelation. What am I saying? Y'all better start going to Bible study. Because if you don't read the Bible, you're going to have a skewed type of gospel. The Bible helps us to be balanced. The Bible gives us the road map of when we hear certain preaching that we say, mm, that don't sound right. Mm, that teaching sound a little suspect. The Bible gives you a sense of discernment. And so Jesus walked with him for hours, and it says when evening came, he was about to leave the guys, and the guys pleaded with him, hey, hey, please stay with us. They didn't say Jesus yet, because they didn't know that was Jesus. Jesus is walking them for hours, giving them Bible study, and they still did not know it was Jesus. And he said, please stay with us, stay with us. And he said, no problem. And it says, when Jesus took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave thanks, it says, their eyes were open, and they saw it was Jesus, and they yelled, they probably yelled his name out, Jesus, and he disappeared right in front of them. And look what they says. Look what they said. Verse 32. Were our hearts not burning within us when he was speaking on the road, when he started explaining the scriptures? What am I saying, guys? If you don't read the Bible, you'll burn out instead of burn up. In other words, if you stop reading the Bible, if you don't get engaged and endouse yourself and get entrenched in the Bible, learning Bible, reading the Bible, guess what? You're going to start burning out quickly. Your faith is going to diminish. You're going to be 
with lack of spiritual nutrients. You want to be phasing out. But here it is. When you start reading the Bible, you tend to know and you tend to see things differently. And you tend to begin to burn in your hearts about certain things God has put in you. And you start getting pregnant with certain things that God put in your heart. And, and you start obeying it. And you start refraining yourself from certain things you know the Bible is against. How do I know? How do I know? I just want to tell y'all, I might, I might shock y'all right now, but if you were reading your Bible, you would know today is really not Easter. I'm going to say it again. If you were really reading your Bible, you would know the world picked this day to be Easter. The real Easter is going to happen on April 24th to the 30th this year. Go, go Google it. Go look it up. How you know? Not one Jewish person said happy Passover. Don't forget, Jesus died on what? Passover. Jesus died on Passover. He was a lamb on what? Passover. That's the reason they call it Passover, because they had to kill a lamb in Egypt, and they had to put the blood of the lamb over the door, and it passed over the house. The spirit of death passed over that house. And now Jesus, when he said it is finished, he died exactly the, the time they were supposed to kill the lamb. That's why John the Baptist told Jesus he is the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So now when you go look, you will see that today is really not Easter. Another indication today is not Easter. Jewish month start by the lunar calendar, by the moon. When in the book, in the Passover, when they knew it was Passover is when they saw a crescent moon. When you go outside tonight, you will not see a crescent moon. That's how you know it's not Passover. Because every Passover got to have a crescent moon. That little slither of the moon still showing by the rest of the while, while three-fourths of the moon is hiding or, or almost the entire moon is hiding, when the crescent of the moon start coming out, that's when it's a new month in the Jewish calendar. So when you look at the Bible and you look at Exodus chapter 12, and you look at Esther chapter 3, you will see the first month in the Bible, the first month of the year is the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan falls on April the 9th, right after the eclipse this year. And then 14 days later, that's when you kill the Passover lamb. That's why you ain't hear no Jewish person this weekend to say happy Passover. Why? Because it ain't Passover. That's why you got to read your so guess what? We're going to have a second shot in celebrating Resurrection what? Second Resurrection Sunday. But if you read your Bible, you will realize, and that's why Jesus, when he showed up with the two witnesses, he had to let them know, listen, I'm going to give you a message of hope. And what's the message of hope? First, the angel going to tell you, and now not only will the angel going to tell you, but I'm going to show you in the message that, hey, you can, no matter what the world tells you, no matter if they tell you Jesus is coming on this day, Jesus is coming on that day, I'm going to show you in the Bible. If the Bible don't say it, don't believe it. If the Bible says it, believe it. So you can stand firm, so you can have hope. It's like, it's like having, a, it's like having a, a vehicle with good insurance. How do you know you got good insurance? What is it called? What kind of coverage? What coverage? You got PIP. Pray. <laughs> Pray. If you got PIP, you, 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 you got a lot of prayer in you. When you have full coverage, when you get in an accident, you don't worry about who's paying. Because full coverage cover the what? Everything. We stay in a state that there is no fault. And what Jesus is saying, listen, when you read the Bible, when you allow the Bible to come in your heart, when you start maintaining the word, when you start standing on the word, guess what? You can get bad news. You still have hope. You know it's not final until God says it's final. You may not have much in your bank account, but you know God will never forsake the righteous. You may have death in your family, but you know death is not their finality. 
You start standing on the Word of God. And that's why it's so important in these last days to start reading your Bible. So number one, how you know hope is still here? God will send you a messenger when you feel like you don't have a message in you. How you know hope is still here? God has given you the Bible, the message to address it. And lastly but not least, how do you know not only a messenger professed it, not only the messenger addressed it, but also the Messiah expressed it. Everybody say expressed it. Expressed by who? The Messiah. Everybody say the Messiah. What I may mean by that, go look in Luke 24, verse 36 to verse 39. Read it with me. It says this, and I'm going to close. I'm going to close with this verse. It says this. Now, as they were, now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, what? Peace to you. But they were what? Terrified and what? And suppose they had seen a, the other Bible says a ghost. They thought they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arouse in your heart, arise in your heart? Behold my what? Hands and my feet that it is I myself. Come and touch me or handle me and see for a spirit does not have what? Flesh and bones as you have seen or you have seen it. And so what Jesus was doing, he was doing three things. Number one, he demonstrated the message. What? He stood among them and he spoke and he showed himself. I love Jesus. You know why? Even when they had doubt, he didn't have to do that. But Jesus still showed up and Jesus still spoke and Jesus just still showed what was going on. He said, come, come and see. And they were shocked. They were like, what? He came, pay attention. First of all, it's scary. He ain't opened the door. Jesus did not open the door. He just showed up in the room. The same way he disappeared on the two guys, he showed up. He showed up. He just showed up in the room, and they were shocked. They thought it was a ghost. Whoa, whoa. And then Jesus said, come on, come touch my body. He said, come. I know you're scared, but I'm going to demonstrate that it is me. Come and see the holes in my hand. Do you know when we get to heaven, Jesus will still have holes in his hands? Do you know that? Do you know when we get to heaven, when you look at Jesus' feet, you will still see the holes in his feet. Do you know that? Do you know when you go give Jesus a hug and you rub his back, you're going to still feel the mark from all the whipping he had on his back? Do you know that? Do you know that if you come and when you hug Jesus in heaven and you rub your hand by his side, you're going to still fear that spear that went by his side would left a mark. Jesus made sure he kept the marks so that when we get to heaven, we're reminded all that is for us. To remind us, I went through all that for you so you can have hope. Hope. And you know what God will do? Why, 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 why demonstrate is so important? Sometimes God, if you don't believe the Bible, he's going to put something in your life to show that he is God. And, and he didn't have to, but because he realized you need some hope, He'll give you a breakthrough. Like my sister sitting over there. My sister sitting over there got hit by a car a couple of weeks ago. And the, and, the, and the vehicle left her at the scene. She's sitting in here with a gash knee and three fractured ribs. Now, go talk to her. She'll tell you she got hope. Because <laughs> God could allow her to die. I mean, she would have had hope here or hope there, but she still have. It's good to have hope here. And so right now, she got a testimony to show. And you know what part of God she knows? You know what part of God? God is Jehovah Rapha. He heals. You know what part of God she knows now? God, God is my protector. He will look out. You can't tell a God don't look out and God cannot heal now. She's experienced it for herself. When you experience how good God's been to you, no matter nobody can come to you and try to talk you out of it. You just know that you know that you know God is hope. And so here it is. Jesus demonstrated. And even today we see that in the Middle East and India where people are getting saved by mere dreams of Jesus. And they're coming to Jesus by the hundreds. People are receiving dreams of Jesus visiting them in the Middle East. And in India, they have a revival. And what am I saying? God will give you a demonstration and also God will disclose his message. What did Jesus do? Go read it. I don't have time to read it, but go read it. Look at verse 44. It says, then Jesus went to the disciples and he says, come on, let's go look at the book of Moses. 
Let's go look at the prophets. But then he added a third set of books. What was the third set of books? The book of Psalms. Do you know Jesus is prophesied in the book of Psalms also? That was two to 3,000 years before Jesus showed up on the scene. David and all the worship leaders were prophesying Jesus is going to suffer. And he had to show them that. He had to show them. Why did Jesus use the Bible? Because Jesus knew, even if I show you my hands and feet, I got to show you. They, they've been talking about me back then. So you can have hope. So when you go preach, you show them the Bible and show them the signs so they may believe that I am the God that gives what? Hope. And look what Paul says. Look what Paul says. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says this, read it with me as we close. For, for if the dead are not raised, then not even Christ has been what? And if Christ have not been raised from the dead, your faith is what? Worthless. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have what? Perish. If, if we have hope in Christ only in this life, we are all, we are of all people must be, must be pitied. Why? Because we're preaching a Christ that's not alive. But it says in verse 20, but the fact is, I'm going to say it again, but the fact is Christ has been what? Raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen, what? Asleep. For since by man death came, by man also come the resurrection of the Dead. For as in Adam, everyone died, but also in Christ, those who believe, all will be made what? And so Paul is saying, listen, if, 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 if Jesus did not raise from the dead, I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my time. We, matter of fact, people should be feeling sorry for us because we believe a lie. But he said, but no, Christ rose from the dead. And not only did he rise from the dead, but he rose other people from the dead. How you know? It's a, right here, let me give you a list of, of his resume of raising people from the dead. Some of y'all know, who was the first person that Christ raised from the dead? Who know? Who know? Ray, say it out loud. Say, say it out loud. The little girl. The little girl, Jairus' daughter, a centurion daughter. He came to the house. He gave her hope. He raised her from the dead. And who's the other person that Christ raised from the dead? That young man that had a funeral. He was in the coffin, and Jesus raised him from the dead. And then there was another person, Jesus' friend. What was Jesus' friend called? Lazarus. He was dead for how many days? Four days. And Jesus raised him from the dead. How many of y'all know the other resurrection that happened? When Jesus died, it says the tombs were open. And it says when Jesus got out of the tomb, it says many holy people also came out of the tomb. So Jesus raised all of them from the dead. But you know what's the only thing about that? They died again. They died again. <laughs> They rose from the dead, but they what? Died again. And even the Apostle Paul, they suffered and died. But you know what? They still had hope in the resurrection. Because they said, listen, if I die, my hope may be done here, but I got a better hope up there. And so sometimes we got to understand we got to have hope here and have hope there. Let me, let, me, let me close it for you, Olden. Let me close it for you. Let me close it. Can I close it for you? There, when I was a shorty, there was this candy that I liked to, to have. Oh, I like that candy. That candy would be in the store, and I think a, 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 a pack, a little pack of that little candy cost at my time. Now, I don't know about yours. In my time, that candy that candy costs 25 cents a little package. Put it up. Put up the candy. Put up the candy for me. Put up the candy. Put up the candy. Put up the candy. You see, when you was in the hood, you said, now nah, later. Because you heard everybody say, now nah, later. One day, I, I stopped and read the, pa the, read the rapper. It says, now... And what? Later. That means you can have the candy now or later. 
It's going to taste good now, and it's going to taste good what? Now, that's sometimes a candy sat in the shelf for so long, it's hard to get the wrapper off. What we used to do as a shorty, we are like, forget the wrapper, let's eat it with the paper. It's going to come out. It's going to come out somewhere. It's going to come out. Why am I talking about this candy? Hope is like that. Hope you can have it now or you can have it later. If it don't work out now, just wait on to later. Hope is still there. So you can have hope now and not later, but you still got hope. You can have hope later and not now. You still got hope. But the best hope is to have it now and look at somebody say you got hope say tell them you got hope when and say it again you got hope what yeah 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 and you got hope what and what so when things work out and things don't work out you still got hope and what you may die tonight but you still got hope And what? Things may not work out. But don't worry. All things come together for the good for those who love the Lord. You can have it. You may not have the money. But don't worry. God will give you the money. You may not have the relationship. But God will give it to you better than. So I just want to encourage you. Look at somebody say, no matter what you go through. Tell him, tell him, tell him. God got you now and what? He got you later. So when you're not looking and you're not worrying and things are about to attack you, God got you now and he got you what? So I want you to declare it out loud. Say, Lord, thank you. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that I got hope now. Now, Lord, I got hope now, and I, and I got it, what? Later. So, Lord, no matter what I go through now, I know, Lord, all things work together for those who love the Lord. And I, and, and I also know the Bible says, you ne- I never seen the righteous forsaken. And I, and I never seen the righteous begging for bread. Lord, I know you said that you are Jehovah Jireh and you supply all my needs. So, Lord, no matter the, the, the situation in the scenario, scenario, no matter the challenges, Lord, I know you got me now. And, Lord, if you call me home, I know you got me later. So, Father, we say thank you. Hope is here. It's not coming later. Hope is here. Lord, as we breathe in and breathe out, hope is Lord, as we walk and talk and have our being, hope is here. And we thank you, Lord, when we see you face to face. Hope is later. So, Father, as we come before you, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us if we complained now. Forgive us if we complained in our situation, in our environment, in our challenges, in our trials, in our troubles. Forgive us, Lord, if we complain now. But, Lord, we give thanks for life. We give thanks for the simplicity of having friends and family. That we sometimes, Lord, forget that it's a blessing. Lord, we thank you for the AC. There's people in Haiti, no AC. There's people in country, no electricity. There's people in in other countries that don't have no vehicle and, and don't have no house to go to but a tent or under a tree. So we say thank you now. Forgive us, Lord, if we complain. Forgive us, Lord, if, we, if we've been hard on ourselves more than you have. Forgive us, Lord. We thank you for hope now. And, Lord, we thank you for the hope we have looking forward, that we know, Lord, death is not final. Lord, we thank you for the joy you have given us, Lord, that we got something to look forward to. We thank you there's a, a house waiting up. A, a, a family waiting for us on the other side. We thank you that there's going to be a joy in a wedding feast. We look forward. Like Paul says, do not focus on the things below, but focus on the things above, things that are righteous, pure, and holy. If you never gave your life to Jesus, let's do it now because you don't know if you'll have a later. 
For the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And the reason why I have these boxes up here is that, is that it's just like this Narcan. This Narcan is known to bring life to people that's on the brink of death. Especially if they've been attacked by an allergy that is suffocating them. Or they've been caught up with a certain drug like fentanyl. And, and they're, they're on the edge of death. You take this little thing right here, knock it, you put it. There's, there's one that has a needle and there's one that's nasal. This is nasal. You put this thing in their nose and just squirt it. Woo! Wake up. And this is what God is doing to your spirit today. He's giving you Narcan because you're on the brink of death. And God want to give you the Narcan of the Holy Ghost. And if it ain't Narcan, he's going to give you this. What they call this, Edith? What they got it? What they call it? Yeah, the fibrillator. The fibrillator, you don't want to practice on this on yourself. You will definitely feel it now. And you might feel it later. I remember when I had to go through the stun gun. They gave me the stun gun shock with the two needles. And they gave me the stun gun on my arm. This is, this is stun gun right here. And you had no control over your body parts. And the reason they do that is to bring people to submission. But this is to bring somebody back from the brink of death. And today... The Lord is giving you a spiritual defibrillator. Some of us are dead because of our sin, but God has given us a, a second chance. Clear! Poof! Don't wait. Don't wait till he have to shock you in order to get your attention. Come now. Don't wait for later. And so today, before you leave, I want you to grab... One of these hearts, stress falls. Why? So it could remind you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him would not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So every heartbeat that you have right now is because of God's grace. I received a call yesterday, a text message yesterday, that one of my pastor friends good friend, caught a stroke and they don't know if he's going to make it. And I just want to remind you that life is precious. You never know if God's going to call you now or later, but be ready now. So if you want to give your life to Jesus or you need prayer for a breakthrough, when I count to three, I'm going to ask you to come up front and I'm going to ask everyone to stand where you're at right now so we can go ahead and close it out. So, so if God is speaking to you, say, Pastor Eddie, God is speaking to me. God is speaking to me that today is my day of hope. Today is my day of salvation. If you're watching on, on, on YouTube or you're watching on our digital platform or virtual platform, please, please make that decision today because tomorrow is not promise. Next week is not promised. Now is the day of salvation. So Father, as we come before you, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us. And if you want to give your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Everyone can say it with me. Lord Jesus, today we thank you as we celebrate your resurrection. And Lord, Today is the day of my salvation. So today by faith, I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, paid the price that I deserve, which is death. For the wages of sin is death. He paid my death sentence so that I would not have eternal death, but have eternal life. So today, Lord, I put my faith in you, Jesus. Thank you for your salvation. 
And if you pray that prayer for the first time, we want to say welcome to the family. Give everyone a hand clap. Everyone give them a hand clap. If you pray that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. And now, let me close with a word of prayer. But if you pray that prayer for the first time, when you see Pastor Bob and some of the leaders up front, please let them know so we can give you a book and so we can make sure you get trained and grow healthy spiritually. So lift up your hands. Let me bless you on this wonderful day. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. And we pray that Jabez prayer. May the Lord bless you indeed. Enlarge your territory and that his hand will be with you and upon you and keep you from causing him pain, causing others pain, and causing ourselves pain. And lastly, let us close with the prayer the Lord told us to pray. Pray it out loud, the Lord's prayer with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. For how long? forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Everyone, please stand and give about three people or four people a hug, and I'm going to ask God to give you a double portion. And for those who are watching us, please join us next week. And remember, I love you, CCC love you, and most of all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit love you. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen.